Hey everybody, today I am super excited to share with you the new DJI Avada 2. Just looking at it, you can see it looks quite a bit different to the previous model. And what DJI has done is improved the areas we would like to have seen improved on the original Avada, such as the transmission, noise, camera quality, improved stabilization, max flight time, and more. They have also added new features, such as easy acro and easy drift, a two-stop throttle on the new motion controller, 10-bit D-Log AM color mode, and more. And today, I would like to walk you through everything that's new on this DJI Avada 2 compared to the original Avada. If you would like to find out more about this drone or pick it up, I will put a link in the description down below. I will also put a link down below where you can find out more about DJI Care Refresh, which is DJI's version of insurance, and I highly recommend picking it up to protect your drone from accidental damage. And we will talk more about Care Refresh later in this video. Okay, I am super excited to share with you the new features of the DJI Avada 2. Let's jump right in. And let's start with the first thing you will notice when you take the Avada 2 out of its box, and that is that the new design is quite different from the original Avada, and overall it looks much more refined. So let's take a look at them differences in detail. Firstly, when putting both drones side by side, you will see that the Avada 2 is not as tall, and this flatter airframe optimizes the aerodynamics. It is, however, larger in both length and width, and this is due to the slightly extended wheelbase, which has improved the drone's power efficiency. Also worth noting that just like its predecessor, the Avada 2 also is not foldable. Now, alongside the improved power efficiency due to that extended wheelbase, and the fact it's now 30 grams lighter, weighing only 377 grams, this helps to improve the flight time by 28%, giving you a maximum flight time of 23 minutes, compared to only 18 minutes with the original Avada. The batteries also have a completely new design, and are longer and thinner. They still slot into the back of the Avada 2, however, I find with its predecessor, the fitment was quite tight, and the tabs were also difficult to press in, and this could make the batteries difficult to remove. Thankfully, this is now not the case, and the batteries slide in and out nice and easy, and the tabs are also super easy to press in. There is also no connecting tab on the batteries, unlike the first generation Avada. This is nice as it removes a point of failure from the battery, and means you won't run the risk of this connection coming loose in the event of a crash, leading to the drone losing power. In general, the battery also feels much more secure when locked in place in the Avada 2, primarily because it sits inside the airframe rather than being held by only two supports, and this should make battery ejections when crashing much less likely. Now something that was a little inconvenient with the first generation Avada was the fact that you couldn't charge a battery directly through the drone. So it's great to see that the Avada 2 now supports direct PD fast charging of the aircraft with a battery inserted. Now, directly charging the drone will take approximately 88 minutes to charge one battery fully. However, if you use the new charging hub included in the Flymore combo, which also supports PD fast charging, it takes approximately only 45 minutes to fully charge each battery. So roughly two hours and 15 minutes for all three. This new charging hub also supports power accumulation. By pressing and holding the power button on the hub itself, you can transfer the remaining power from multiple batteries inserted into the hub to the single battery with the highest remaining power, which is a super useful function. Now, by far, one of the biggest pain points with the original Avada was the micro SD card location. I'm sure you will agree. Located inside one of the propeller ducts, it was awkward to get to, and inserting or removing a micro SD card was pretty difficult. Thankfully, this has now been fixed, and the location has been moved to the side of the Avada 2, making it incredibly easy to access the micro SD card slot. Here, you will also find a USB-C port, which can be used for charging the aircraft directly or downloading the footage of the internal storage. Speaking of internal storage, this has been now more than doubled for the Avada 2. 
which now has a whopping 46 gigabytes of onboard storage, compared to 20 gigabytes available on the original Avada. This will allow you to store approximately 40 minutes of 4K 60fps footage internally, which means even if you forget to insert a microSD card, you will still have plenty of space to store your clips. Moving back to the design, looking at the area around the camera, you can also see it's more unobstructed above and beneath the camera compared to its predecessor. And this allows for a larger camera tilt angle, from negative 85 degrees to plus 80 degrees. You can also now tilt the Avada 2's camera much further downward before you see the airframe come into view. The Avada 2 also comes with a class 1 rating, which you can see on the sticker on the side of the drone. Just like before, the Avada 2 comes with a built-in propeller guard, which feels very strong and sturdy. And this is great because it protects the drone from minor bumps and knocks that might occur when flying FPV, and means it's more resilient if you hit something like a tree for example. So just how fast can it fly? Well, when it comes to the horizontal speed of the new Avada 2, the max speed in normal and manual flight mode remain the same as its predecessor. However, in sport mode, the Avada 2 is faster, flying at 16 meters per second compared to the first generation of Vata's 14 meters per second. Now this is important as sport mode is the fastest flight mode available using the motion controller, which means if you fly using that controller, the Avata 2 is faster. When it comes to the ascent and descent speed, the Avata 2 is also faster than its predecessor, capable of ascending or descending at 9 meters per second in sport mode, compared to the first generation Avata's max vertical speed of 6 meters per second. Just like the original Avata, this new model has 3 inch propellers. However, these now have 3 blades instead of 5. Now, let's talk about noise. Easily one of the biggest complaints with the first Avada was just how loud it was. In the air, it was an incredibly loud drone that made a head-turning, screeching noise. Well, thankfully with this new Avada 2, the noise has been significantly reduced compared to the previous generation, registering at just 81 decibels, which is similar to the noise level of the DJI Air 3. And this makes a big difference. Looking towards the tail, you can see two new upgraded binocular fisheye sensors which have a wider field of view than the standard downward only facing sensors used in the first generation Avada. These are also positioned at a 45 degree angle, allowing the Avada 2 to monitor obstacles both behind and below. Now, it's important to note that these are not obstacle avoiding sensors. The Avada 2 will not stop itself flying into any obstacles it detects. Instead, these sensors are used to achieve more precise positioning during low altitude and indoor flights, helping increase flight stability and safety by allowing it to gauge positioning based on the ground beneath it and a wall behind, for example. So instead of it floating or drifting, it will remain stable in position. Another big area of improvement is the camera, which now has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor and an aperture of f2.8 compared to the previous generation's 1 over 1.7 inch sensor, which also had an aperture of f2.8. Now, not only does this produce a better image overall, but it also improves the camera's low light performance, such as when flying at sunsets or indoors. The dynamic range of the Avada 2 has also been improved, with an overall increase of two stops. This has been achieved through both algorithm and hardware enhancements, meaning that darker areas of your image will now appear brighter and have more detail due to the shadows being significantly improved. This also has the benefit of you being able to see dark areas of your environment more clearly through your goggles when flying. With this larger sensor and dynamic range improvements, I notice a big improvement in video quality overall when comparing footage to its predecessor, and I have been very impressed with the results. 
Now with the Avada 2, you can record up to 4K 60fps HDR. HDR being new to this drone and not available on the previous model. Alongside 60fps, you can also capture footage at 30 or 50fps in either 4K, 2.7K or 1080p. There is also the option to record in either 4x3 or 16x9 aspect ratio. If you wish to slow the footage down, you can also capture 2.7K or 1080p footage in 100 or 120 FPS, allowing you to slow the video down by around four times. Also, just like the first generation Avata, the Avata 2 also allows you to choose between three different fields of view normal, wide and ultra wide, with ultra wide offering a 155 degree field of view. This ultra wide field of view is much closer to what we can see with our own eyes and gives a real sense of flying super fast when the drone is low or through the smallest openings. Moving on to stabilization, which is arguably one of the most important features of a FPV drone. Just like its predecessor, the Avada 2 has a single tilt axis gimbal, but importantly, the electronic image stabilization has been upgraded and improved. We now get Rocksteady 3 Plus, and this is a big improvement, providing noticeably smoother footage, especially when making sharp turns, changing directions when flying fast, or when flying in windy conditions compared to the Rocksteady 2 stabilization available on the first generation Avada. This is great as it means you can get silky smooth footage straight from the drone without having to do any stabilization to the footage at a later stage. Just like the original Avada, if you prefer to stabilize the footage in post using software like Gyroflow, you can store the motion data to the footage by turning off electronic image stabilization and setting the field of view to wide. Horizon Steady is also included, and when this is enabled, it keeps the horizon in your video level no matter what rotation you had the drone while recording the footage. Aside from the normal color profile, 10-bit D-Log M has also been added to the Avata 2, replacing the Decini-like option available on the first generation model. The benefits to using D-Log M is that it allows you to retain more highlight and shadow details for post-processing and gives you much more flexibility when color grading in post. One feature that I am super excited to see added to the Avata 2 is the ability to adjust the sharpness and noise reduction levels of the footage within the camera settings. And this is much like what is available on drones like the Mini 4 Pro, Air 3, etc. This allows you to tailor the image to your own style directly in the goggles. So if you would like a slightly less digital and softer image, for example, then you could simply lower the sharpness setting. Now, an exciting new feature of the Avada 2, especially if you are a beginner, is the new Easy Acro and Easy Drift modes. One of the issues with the previous motion controller was that you couldn't do any moves, such as flips and rolls with it. Well, with the RC Motion 3, you can use the new Easy Aggro modes to do one press flips, rolls and 180s, making this perfect for beginners as the drone doesn't move automatically for you. So let's take a look at this in action. To enable this new mode, bring down the top menu and scroll across to the Easy Aggro mode and enable it. Now you will see a new menu appear on the left side of the goggle screen and you can scroll through these modes using the new scroll wheel on the side of the motion controller. Initially you will be in slide mode, which is the traditional setting for the joystick. However, if you scroll down to 180 drift mode and then start to fly forwards by squeezing the motion controller trigger, whenever you push the joystick left or right, the Avada 2 will spin 180 degrees either left or right, but continue flying in the original direction to give you this dynamic effect. Scrolling down to the flip mode, and this is where things get exciting. Now when you push the joystick either left or right, the Avada 2 will automatically perform a roll in that direction. And when you press the joystick forwards or backwards, the drone will also perform a flip in that direction. The best thing about this mode is that you can perform these flips and rolls while flying around using the motion controller to get some really dynamic movement in your clips. Now when it comes to the controllers, the Avada 2 is compatible with the new RC Motion 3, that's the controller that acts like a virtual joystick to allow you to fly the drone, and the new FPV Remote Controller 3, which is the controller that you can use to fly the Avada 2 manually. For the goggles, the Avada 2 is compatible with the new 
DJI Goggles 3. Both these controllers and goggles have the new upgraded antenna system to allow you to use AugusSync 4 with the Avada 2, and this improves the transmission distance up to 13 km FCC or 10 km CE compared to the first generation Avada's range of 10 km FCC or 2 km CE. So you can see that there is a big improvement in the CE transmission range. Now I personally never fly my drones these distances away from me, but where I have found AugieSync 4 to be a massive improvement is if you fly momentarily behind an obstacle such as a tree for example. I sometimes find that the original Avada transmission could cut out and you could lose that video feed from your goggles. Well with the Avada 2 using AugieSync 4, I have found the transmission to be a massive improvement. When flying the drone in a range of different locations, I have found the transmission to be much more reliable and stable. And when the drone has just momentarily flown behind an obstacle such as a tree, I have found no transmission dropout. Also, due to the newer AugieSync 4 transmission, the live video feed in the goggles has an incredibly low latency, which can be as low as 24 milliseconds at 1080p 100 FPS. Just like the original model, turtle mode is also included, which can come in handy if you have crashed the Avada 2 somewhere inaccessible and it's upside down preventing you from taking it off. If you simply go to settings, controller and enable turtle mode, the Avada 2 will automatically attempt to self right itself, allowing you to remotely take it off again and recover the drone. Now, if you fly with friends, one of my favorite new features of the Goggles 3 is the Wi-Fi live feed sharing. Before, if you had friends with you and you wanted them to be able to see what you could see in the goggles, you had to connect your smartphone to the goggles with a USB-C cable, and this was awkward, as they would firstly have to stand close to you, and you would also have to be careful about turning your head so that you didn't disconnect the cable. Well, now with Wi-Fi live feed sharing, you can output a secondary live feed wirelessly. And this is much more convenient and frees you from having to use cables to share the image from your goggles. Head tracking is also available on the Avada 2 and Goggles 3. With this option enabled, you can control the camera view by simply turning your head and looking in the direction you want to see. This can either be used for a more immersive flying experience, or you can use your head movements to control the camera while directing the flight path of the Avada 2 with the controller. So now let's quickly look at the controller options in a bit more detail. Firstly, looking at the DJI RC Motion 3. As you can see, when you place this side by side with the RC Motion 2, it also has a new refined design. This controller is now smaller and lighter than its predecessor and is much more comfortable to hold. This smaller design also makes it even more portable. The buttons remain roughly the same. However, we get this new dial, which is much easier to use with your thumb than the older version. The biggest change, however, is this new two-stop throttle. With the first generation Avada and motion controller, if you moved the controller while the drone was hovering, it would also turn. And this could be annoying as it would turn while you were making adjustments to the goggles holding the motion controller. It also meant that the drone might spin due to jitters while holding the controller. Well, this new two-stop throttle completely fixes that and makes it easier to use. Now, when the Avada 2 is hovering and the throttle is not pressed, the drone will not respond to any controller movements, allowing you to make adjustments to your goggles, for example, and not have the Avada 2 spinning around. Then, when you pull the trigger, you will feel two levels of resistance. If you only pull the trigger to the first resistance point, the drone will not fly forwards. Instead, this now activates the drone to mimic the movement of the joystick, allowing you to look around while the drone hovers in place. Then, when you want to start flying around, you can squeeze the trigger past the first resistance point, and now the Avada 2 will start flying forwards while following the movement of the joystick. And just like before, if you push the joystick away from you, the Avada 2 will fly in reverse. Another new feature is that when the drone is not in the air, you can also use the RC Motion 3 as a pointer or AR cursor on the goggle screen to navigate around the menus and change settings much quicker than using the joystick on the goggles themselves. 
Now, something to be aware of is that just like with the previous generation Avada, if you wish to fly the Avada 2 in full manual mode, then you will need the FPV Remote Controller 3, as this is not possible with the Motion 3 controller. So let's talk compatibility. What controllers work with the Avada 2? Well, at launch, only the new DJI RC Motion 3 and FPV Remote Controller 3 are compatible. And these two new controllers are not compatible with the previous generation of VATA or DJI FPV. The previous generation RC Motion 2 and FPV Remote Controller 2 are also not compatible at launch. However, there is a plan for these to become compatible with the Avada 2 via a firmware update at some point in the future. Worth noting that the new RC Motion 3 can also be used to fly the Air 3 and the DJI Mini 4 Pro with the goggles. Speaking of the Goggles 3, let's now take a deeper look at them. And again, when put side by side with the Goggles Integra, there are a few differences. Looking at the Goggles 3, you will see two new binocular cameras on the outside facing forward. And these allow a new feature called Real View Picture in Picture. If you tap twice on the left side of the goggles when wearing them, the screen will now change, allowing you to see through these cameras. And this is great as it means you don't need to take the goggles off to view your surrounding environment. To get back to the drone camera view, you simply tap twice on the right side of the goggles. Another obvious change on these goggles is the new forehead support. And because the strap is now attached to this and not the side of the goggles, I have found the Goggles 3 to be much more comfortable to wear for long periods of time as they don't squeeze on your face as much as the Goggles Integra. I find with the Goggles Integra, whenever I tightened them enough so that they didn't slip down my face, they pressed quite tightly around my eyes. And whenever I took the goggles off, there would always be red marks where they were digging in. But with the Goggles 3, this doesn't happen. The padding is also no longer a foam material and is instead a much more flexible rubber material which forms around your face better to block out outside light. There's also this new proximity sensor inside the goggles which detects when you're wearing them and automatically turns the screen off when you take the goggles off. Just like the Goggles Integra and Goggles 2, the Goggles 3 has dual 1080p micro OLED screens with a refresh rate of up to 100Hz. And when it comes to diopter adjustment, there is also no individual diopter lenses you have to fit. Instead, you can turn the two dials on the bottom of the goggles to a range of between negative six to plus two. I personally wear glasses and I'm short-sighted, and I find this feature so handy. And just by using the diopter adjustment and turning the dials, I can get the screens to be super sharp when I'm wearing the goggles without my glasses. Just like with the previous generation goggles, you can also adjust the distances between the lenses by sliding the two dials on the bottom until the image is perfectly aligned for you. And once happy, you can push these dials inward and tighten them to lock the adjustments in place. Just like with the goggles Integra, the Goggles 3 battery is combined into the headband, which is great, but even better is the fact the battery life has now been extended. Whereas the Goggles 2 and Integra only achieve approximately two hours battery life, the new Goggles 3 has a max battery life of approximately 3 hours. When it comes to compatibility, the new Goggles 3 not only work with the new Avada 2, but they can also be used to fly the DJI Air 3 and Mini 4 Pro with the DJI RC2 or DJI RC N2. Currently, the previous generation Goggles 2 and Goggles Integra do not work with the Avada 2. However, as mentioned previously, there is a plan for them to become compatible via a firmware update at some point in the future. Now, with the original Avada Fly More combo, you did not get a shoulder bag. However, with the new DJI Avada 2 Fly More combo, you do. And I just wanted to show you it quickly as I think it's really fantastic. Most of the time, I don't actually use the bag supplied with the Fly More combo. But this shoulder bag is actually excellent. Inside, it has enough space to carry the drone, charging hub with spare batteries, goggles, and controller. And I've been using it over the past few weeks every time I take the drone out to fly as it's super convenient. Now, if you're planning on purchasing the DJI Avada 2, then something I think is very important to consider is DJI Carry Fresh. 
It's DJI's version of insurance, and it covers you for accidental damage that includes collisions, flyaways, and water damage. Now, I have had the misfortune of crashing and damaging a DJI Avada and a DJI Mini 3 Pro, and both times I used the DJI Carry Fresh service and was very impressed. When it came to the Avada that I crashed, I returned it on a Tuesday and had a brand new one in my hands by the Friday. It was incredibly quick. Now, although the Avada 2 does have a built-in prop guard that will protect it against small bumps and knocks, a simple lapse in judgment or concentration can mean that you crash the Avada 2 quite hard and damage the drone, so it's worth being protected. And I will put a link in the description down below where you can find out more about DJI Carry Fresh. So there you have it, that's everything new on the DJI Avada 2 and I am very, very excited about this drone. The Avada 2 is very much a refined version of the original Avada and it offers improvements in all the main areas such as ease of use, may that be the new micro SD card location or how the battery inserts, flight time, transmission distance, noise level which is a big one and more. Now before you go, if you like this video and you learned something new, then please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better images and more cinematic videos with your drones, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming DJI Avada 2 videos, then please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. And when you're down there, be sure to check the notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new Avada 2 videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more videos now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.